Welcome church family and guests. We are so excited to have you with us today. If you are a visitor, we would love to get to know you a little bit better. You can text WELCOME to 313-513-3922. Thank you for coming today. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Vacation Bible School is set for August 1st through the 5th from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. If you're interested in volunteering for Vacation Bible School, please see the front desk of the lobby. Hey church family, your faithful giving is making a difference in your church and in the community. I want you to know that you have made a big impact. Help us keep the mission moving forward by giving today at hazelfreewill.org slash give or drop your offering in the offering boxes in the lobby. Join us today as we begin to worship and praise Jesus together. Praise the one. 
Calvary, there stands an endless mercy tree. Every broken, weary soul, find your rest and be made whole. Stripes of blood that stain its frame, shed to wash away our shame from the scars, pure love release salvation by the mercy tree in the sky between two thieves hung the blameless prince of peace bruised and battered scarred and scorn sacred head pierced by his It is finished was his cry, the perfect lamb was crucified, the sacrifice, our victory, our Savior chose the mercy tree. Oh, when dark that violent day the whole earth quaked and love's display three days silent in the ground this body born for heaven's crown heaven's
to be saved. Stand to your feet. Make welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, church. Praise Him. We are more than conquerors through Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Anybody glad that we've got hope, we've got life, we've got peace, we've got joy? And the joy of the Lord is our strength this morning. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. And I sure am thankful. And I'm excited to be in God's house today. I want you to make him welcome. I want you to make one another welcome. I want you to worship the Lord today like this could be the very last opportunity. And could I say that's not a cliche? I don't take that lightly. This could be the very last opportunity that we have to praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We may never meet in this place like this with this group of people ever again. I want you to give it everything you've got today, worshiping Him and uh, just serving the Lord. And uh, we've got a special service planned for you today. And I'm just looking forward to it. How many of you came expecting a blessing from the Lord today? I'm looking for God to do something big. I don't want another ordinary service, Brother Ken. I just want God to have His way. We want to be obedient to Him. And I'm looking forward to what God is going to do today. I'm going to turn over to Brother Lucas now. And uh, we got some special things coming up for you. And you just be obedient to the Lord today. Let's sing this chorus. And because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone because I know I know I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives Sing it again. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just. can be seated this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Right quick, if you're watching online, thank you for being a part of the service this morning or by way of television. Uh, we are live on television this morning. Thank you for watching us. If you'd like to give to the ministry, you can do that. If you're here through the offering boxes in the, in the foyer, or you can go online and do that through at hazefulfreewill.org, or you can give through our app this morning. We do have a special guest uh, here with us this morning that we are glad to, to have, Brother Bob Sellers. He's coming to us from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Now, let's not hold that against him, Rob. But formerly of the Kingsman Quartet, would you make welcome Brother Bob Sellers this morning? Thank you, Brother Lucas. Thank you, Brother Kyle. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Aren't you glad to be here? I tell you what, the more I exist in this old world, the less I feel at home. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. There's a light in the window. The table set in splendor. Someone stand by the open door. I can see Crystal River, Lord, I must be near forever. 
Never been this homesick before. If you know it, sing it. Oh, see the bright lights shine. It's just about home time. And I can see my father standing at the door. This world's been a wilderness. I'm ready for deliverance. Lord, Bunch this morning. I can see the family gathered, their sweet faces all familiar, but no one's old or feeble in the fall. This old lonesome heart is crying. I think I'll spread my wings for flying. I have never been this hard. Homesick for heaven, amen. Y'all like that old kind of music. See the bright light shine. It's just about home time. And I can't see my father standing for at the door. This world's been a wilderness. I'm ready for the living. folks this morning. Hey, I am Bob Sellers. They didn't tell you a story. That's my name. This is what's left of me. I understand Brother Lucas is in the banking business. I ask him how in the world has he kept his hair. I used to be in the banking business. I recognize a few other bankers in here too. <laughs> but we do. Oh, before I go any further, I've got my better half by far. My wife, Kansas, just like the state. She was my uh, high school sweetheart and God has kept us together ever since and somehow I've managed to hang on to her ever since. <laughs> and uh, we just celebrated our 23rd uh, year anniversary. Would y'all give my wife, Kansas, a big hand? I, she is so much of a huge of a part of what I do. Um, I was saved. I, I'm not going to take up a lot of time speaking this morning, but I like to share this. Um, every opportunity I get. I was saved at the age of eight years old in a Free Will Baptist church. My grandfather was a Free Will Baptist pastor. Um, he had a fourth grade education. He and my grandmother, now this is how we do things in, down in Alabama. Anybody from Alabama? I see some of you. I see even see a shirt with a script A on it or two in here, and one of them's even got crimson hair. I'm feeling at home, I'm feeling... 
But he was 17 and my grandmother had just turned 14. And they spent 60 some odd years together. But for 32 of those years of their marriage, my grandfather was lost. Not only was he lost, but alcohol consumed his life. He was basically a functioning alcoholic, what we would call it today. My grandfather would have told you he was a drunk. But at the age of 49 years old, something miraculous happened. Jesus Christ came into his heart, cleansed his sins as white as snow, took all of that desire to drink away from him, and he began to deal with him and call him into the ministry. And just a short time later, a few years later, he was, uh, had found, founded his own church to which my wife and I and our family are still members of today. Faith Free Will Baptist Church, a little white brick church between Carrollton and Gordo, Alabama. You have never been there in your life. Not on purpose, not on purpose. We don't get tourists like Hayesville and Young Harris and Lake Chatoog and all this stuff around here. Uh, I'd love to uh, be able to stand before you this morning and tell you that I've been perfect since then, but I've already told you my wife is here. She, <laughs> I haven't. I, I believe uh, as Christians, uh, as hard as we try, I honestly believe that we fail the Lord miserably each and every day. You know why I believe that? And I don't say, no, we might say ugly words or we might have ugly thoughts or, or commit ugly deeds or, or, or anything else. But I don't think any of us do what we really are capable of as far as spreading the kingdom of God. Amen? We ought to be so excited about that deliverance I just sang about that we're trying to reach souls each and every day, everybody we run into, um, from now until the Lord takes us out of here, either by physical death or he just comes down from glory and, and brings us home. Amen? And, uh, but I tell you what, I serve one and I'm singing about one this morning. He's always perfect. He never fails. He never slips. Oh, he always has, church. And amen, he always will. Oh, I thank you this morning. I've not always been faithful but he has I've not always been graceful but he has I've not always been true but he's always come through he has yes he I tell him I'm not strong, but he says I am. I say I can go on, you felt that? But he says I can. I've not loved everyone, not always overcome, but he has, yeah.
I came across this song about two years ago, and uh, was going through something. <laughs> How many of you have ever gone through something? I know some of you today are going through something. I found this song to speak to my heart in such a way that I said I had to record it, and God let me do that. Uh, I mentioned that old time. Free Will Baptist, hellfire and brimstone preacher and granddaddy of mine a lot. I remember one time he spoke about life being like this. Valleys and troughs. Sometime we're riding up here, think things can't get any better. He said, just hang on. Odds are if you live long enough, it's going to change. Somebody testify right there. Things won't stay the same forever. He said, oh, we get down here in the bottom. You feel like things can't get any worse and your life is... It's just over and God has just forgotten where you are and who you are. He said, just hang on. Things won't stay that way the same forever. Somebody testify right there. Amen. Jesus Christ is always and ever present in our life. Amen. His word is true. He's never lied. He said it. He'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us if we'll allow him to. No matter how bad the storm that sweeps through your life may seem, he will be that calm center of it. He'll be the eye of our storms this morning. When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet, between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see. When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and family, I feel the rain reminding me. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Amen. Yes, he does. I've been here. When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith, I 
see the future, my picture, and it slowly fades away. And when the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face, I find my peace in Jesus' name in the eye of the storm. You remain in control in the middle of the war. You guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Some of you know what I'm singing about this morning, amen? You felt those storms of life come by and you don't see any light at the end of the tunnel and all the stuff. Jesus shows me. When the test comes in and the doctor says, I've only got a few months left, it's like a bitter pill I'm swallowing. I can barely catch my breath Or when addiction steals my baby girl And there's nothing I can do as a church My only hope is to trust in you I choose to trust you, Lord In the eye of the storm You remain in control Oh, in the middle of the war You guard my soul Sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. You remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guide my soul. You alone are the anchor. When my sails are torn, your love surrounds me. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me. In the eye of the storm, in the eye of the storm, in the eye of the storm. I tell you what, church, I, I don't ever know when I'm going to come up here and sing or where the unction, y'all ever use the word unction around here, is going to lead. But it seems like every time I take a stage somewhere and sing lately, my mind is on heaven. Have you turned on a news channel lately? Don't. Unless you want to get grumpy. Kick the cat. Just turn it off. I, I, I promise you I've, I've had to do that. Now some say, well, it's... I, I, I don't think it's good to choose to be oblivious to that. I'm not oblivious. I keep up with what's going on. But when you just hear constant, constant, ne- nothing spreads any faster other than wildfire, I think, than negativity. If you don't believe it, you get somebody negative in your church. Get somebody negative in your workplace. <laughs> you get somebody negative in your home, amen. It'll spread across the whole bunch, and then you'll all be ill and disgruntled all the time. So my mind has been on heaven so much. Hey, maybe that means Jesus is coming soon. I think he's coming soon. Whenever, whenever that is, it's going to be soon. Yeah, I, I, did, I traveled with the Kingsman for seven years. Somebody reminded me of this this morning. Young man named Will Tyson. He is from Hayesville. Y'all know Will? I think he's said hello to everybody in here this morning. He's got his family here, but... Uh, this young man helps me a whole lot up in this air, and he reminded me of something I said one time. I, that, that bus, when it would pull up to Asheville, sometime it was in the wee hours of Monday morning. We'd been traveling out all over the country. And I'd get in that little car. Did y'all see my bus when you pulled up? Y'all like my bus? I've got the most economical bus in all of gospel music. It's a Honda Civic Hybrid. 
48 MPGs, baby. Biden can raise a price. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. <laughs> I'll get in trouble. But I'd get in that little car and I'd start heading south and west toward Alabama just as fast as I could as soon as the wheel stopped on that bus. And so many times when I would be doing that, uh, I realized why they call it the Smoky Mountains up here. That fog and the, those would be just covering those mountains like a blanket. And then the sun would begin to rise. I'd be waking up a little bit better. The birds are chirping. I knew that. And all of a sudden, those clouds and that blanket of fog, fog will start to dissipate from the tops of those mountains. And one morning I thought, you know, that's the way life is. The Bible says life is but a vapor. Here today and gone tomorrow. And tomorrow, folks, is not promised for any of us. What does the Bible say? Sufficient is the evil of this day for all the worrying. Take no thought of the morrow because we may never see it. We, we spend so much of our lives planning for a future that if you think about it, never really exists. You see, today is yesterday's future. <laughs> and if you really want to see God's humorous side, you start making some big and grand and glorious plans in your life or about your future, and you watch them change and become nothing that even resembles what you had in mind. But maybe I'm just getting old, and that's why I have some. <laughs> but one day, church, I'm excited about a better place. And I think as Christians, we ought, to, we ought to be dwelling on our eternity all the time and remembering that when, when that problem happens in your home or in your workplace or you have more month at the end of the money. Y'all ever do that? Or when that doctor comes in with that test result and you know before he ever opens his mouth that whatever he's about to say is really, really bad and it's going to change your life forever. When, God forbid, you lose that spouse, you lose your parents, you lose, heaven forbid, a child or a child breaks your heart in two. As Christians, we ought to shout knowing that one day all of that's going to pass away. <laughs> Aren't you glad, brother? That wasn't written by Aesop or any other storyteller. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That book is real, folks. It's true. Every word squeezed between the front and the back pages is the inerrant, infallible, and perfect Word of God himself. What was sin is sin will always be sin. Amen? And we're living in perilous times, but one day, with the Kingsman, always one of our most requested songs. Somebody's already mentioned Squire Parsons to me. I understand that. He's my favorite too. I think he's the best singer-songwriter that God ever gave planet Earth. And I love him. He's more than that. He's just a wonderful, solid rock of a Christian man of God. But one of our most requested songs was a song that the Kingsman put on an album, a live version of it many, many, many moons ago called Look For Me at Jesus' Feet. And the reason for that, the reason it was so popular is because it gave people that hope and that reminder, that blessed assurance that this is not the end. This is just the beginning. When we leave this life, it's just the beginning. And Brother Squire actually wrote that as a love song to his wife, Linda, as, as a poem said, hey, honey, I'm traveling up and down the highways and the byways all the time. I'm gone here and there. You get word that I'm not going to make it back. Don't, don't worry over me. You take care of our kids and everything else, but don't worry about me. You just come and you can find me at the feet of Jesus Christ. And the same for me. If I get word that you go before me, that's exactly where I'm coming first is to the feet of Jesus Christ. This song has a similar, similar message. And I love I love songs about the hope of eternally living with Jesus Christ 
and with our loved ones and friends who have gone on, and they're over there waiting on us right now. Amen. One day we're going to see them again. All our troubles, all our pain, all our trial, all our strife, tribulation is going to end when we close our eyes here because we're going to open them at Jesus' feet. Amen. Amen. Listen to the words of this new song. Let it bless your heart this morning. Since the day I was saved, there's been a longing in me to see Jesus face to face. He said that he would go and make a place for me. There with him I could stay. Though the times are hard and the road is long, him I walk the golden street. When I close my eyes here and open them at Jesus' feet. The struggles down here that we have to bear can be compared to the joy that's in where pain is a stranger, there is no danger, it's glory forevermore. Sin has been conquered, our troubles are old, and death will go down in defeat. When I close my Can you imagine? I can only imagine. <laughs> now I'm a little older, there's a stoop in my shoulder. Soon I'll pass through death's cold door. All the trials and temptations I face down. I won't have to face anymore I'm looking toward heaven And the face of my Savior There my life will be complete When I close my eyes here And open them at Jesus' feet The struggles down here that we have to bear can't be compared to the joy that's in store. Where pain is a stranger, there is no danger, it's glory forevermore. Sin has been conquered, our troubles are Death will go down in defeat When I close my eyes here And open them at Jesus' feet Yes, when I close my eyes here And open them at Jesus' feet Amen. Amen. I want to. I want to sing one more song if I got time, uh, Brother Kyle. I'm looking forward to hearing what uh, God has in store through us, uh, for us through the spoken word. I don't believe there's any replacement for the spoken word, and I'm uh, certainly anticipating. Uh, that this morning, uh, but before I fail to, I want to I want to thank you all for for the invitation to come by and, and sing some of these songs for you this morning. Uh, many thanks to uh, Brother Chris, and even though he left town when he found out I was coming, <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> also, where's Miss Vicky at?
She's, she's at Children's Church. All right, well, I hope she can hear me somewhere because I, 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 want, I want to tell on her, and I've already uh, told, told on her to you, Pastor. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we don't get to travel together a whole lot, and, and, and we certainly don't when I'm not singing a whole lot. And, uh, but we took a little trip up to this part of the world uh, two, three weeks ago, and uh, we went to Helen, Georgia, and we went, uh, we stayed in Young Harris down there at the beautiful uh, resort that Will runs. And uh, Blairsville and Blue Ridge, all these neat little towns y'all have up here. And just, just had a ball for two or three days. And, but on the last morning, we were getting ready to head home. I said, well, I'm going to run by the church. You see, I've spoken with you, Pastor, several times, but I've never actually had the privilege of meeting him yet. I said, well, I'm going to stop by and see if, if Pastor Chris might be in. Well, he wasn't. But, uh, so I'm standing there with my face in the window trying to see somebody. And I look in and I see a lady going. <laughs> this is a true story. She can explain this later, but she had had a strange phone call the night before, and I scared her to death. But thankfully, she looked out, and she saw my car, and she saw my wife, and I guess she thought maybe I, I wasn't too bad of a looking guy, so <laughs> she opened the door, and, and I wasn't, and I, and I spoke with her, and she gave me a whole tour of your church and your school and all your facilities. But what struck me most is that she took my wife and I by the hand, Brother Kyle, before we left, and she prayed the most beautiful prayer over us and our family and our travels and, uh, and, and our upcoming service here, and that just meant to work the world to me. So thank you, Vicki, uh, for being an obedient heart. And thank you all, and, uh, and uh, Lucas, he, he made this, setting this up this morning so easy. But I want to sing one more song that's probably been sung here a lot of times. I, I could do something off of my new album, and I do have CDs. I hope you'll come by and uh, pick them up, uh, 15 each or more than one. We'll work something out. And I like to say this, if you're here and, and for whatever reason you don't have the means of getting a CD, you let me know, and I want everybody to leave here with some of my music this morning. We'll, we'll work that out. But uh, I could sing something off of that would be the, probably the smart thing to do, but y'all can look at me and tell I'm not the smartest fellow in the world. But uh, I want to sing a song that God has put on my heart uh, because uh, my friends Gold City made this a huge hit, I guess, 35, 40 years ago, and it's only gotten better ever since then because it stands the test of time since the words in it are truer today than I believe they've ever been. How many of you are looking forward to hearing that sound that's going to absolutely split the graves? The dead in Christ are going to rise, and those of us who remain are going to meet them in the air. When that great midnight cry sounds, and folks, I mention that news every time I hear something going on in this old world, I think it can't be much longer. Amen. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet. Today, we all know that everything is all right. Amen. 
Listen, tell me this isn't true. I look around me, I see prophecies fulfilling, and all the signs of the times while they're appearing. Amen, and God's so good this morning. One wonderful job. Give him another clap off and a praise. Brother Bob, fantastic, fantastic job. Lucas and Chelsea and Tim and everybody, I want you to go ahead and come this morning. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm <clears throat> uh, struggling a little bit this morning. I, I want to be sensitive to God. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I believe with all my heart there are people that got needs in this place today. I believe with everything that I've got that there are people that are hurting and broken and people that are possibly even here today and you're lost without God <clears throat> and you need a Savior and I want to be obedient to the Lord. I, I've got about five or six pages of stuff I sent to Curtis that was the message for today and I'm sorry but it's not going to be the message for this morning and, and uh, I, just, I just want to mind God that be alright. <clears throat> and uh, I, I want to give you just a quick verse of scripture though and share just some very few quick thoughts with me, and then we're going to pray because I believe there are people that need God right now. <laughs> you know the story very well in Luke chapter number 18, and we'll look at just two places. <clears throat> you don't even have to stand right, right now at this moment, this morning, but in Luke chapter number 18, you know the story about a blind man. And in Luke 18's account, the Bible said there was Jesus coming to Jericho and a certain blind man was by the wayside begging. And Luke's gospel, Luke's account says that he heard the multitude passing by and asked what it meant. And fortunately, somebody told him, Brother Ken. The Bible said there was a group of people that rebuked him and tried to keep him where he was. But somebody, no doubt, <laughs> stepped out of the crowd. 
Brother Philip, somebody told him what it meant, all the noise and what all the hustle and the bustle was about, what all the meeting was going on, what all the gathering was taking place, what all the commotion was about is that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. My friend, can I tell you all something this morning? It does not matter who's standing here. It doesn't matter who's up singing. It doesn't matter who the preacher is for today. Let me tell you what all the hustle and bustle about is in the sanctuary this morning. Let me tell you the good news of this entire day is that Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, I wish I had somebody help me this morning, the Son of the living God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords is passing by this way and is very present in this place right now. And my Bible said this, that you should seek the Lord while He may be found and call upon Him while he is near. My friends, let me tell you something. He can be found in this place today. I feel the presence. I feel the spirit of the living God breathing on this place right now. I feel his presence. I don't know about you, but I feel the hand of God. Jesus is passing by this way. But then I looked in a different account in Mark's gospel, and what I found was that the man had a name, he had a family, he had a life, but he was in a place where not only was he blind, but he was begging. He had been calling out, but it seemed like the circumstance that he was dealing with was so insurmountable. It was so overwhelming that he had cried and he had cried and he had cried and no doubt somebody had heard him but he still wasn't getting anywhere. I'm just curious this morning. Have you cried out? Have you called out? Have you been desperate? But it seemed like, and maybe you have even prayed to God. You've even called out your prayer request. And you've made your request known. You may have even been to the altar before. Let me ask you this. Do you feel like... <coughs> There's so much overwhelming noise around. Do you ever feel like there are so many other things that are distracting, that are, that, are, that, are, that are just overshadowing your cry? Do you ever feel like nobody hears? Do you ever feel like God doesn't hear your cry? He's in a place where he's not only blind, but he's begging. You know what I find? The scripture doesn't use this word, but I believe with all my heart he's in a place where he's desperate. He's desperate. He's desperate. I need help today. I need a breakthrough today. And so, listen, he's cried before, he's prayed before, he's begged before, he's been broken before. But Lucas, today, there is a new spirit of desperation on the inside of him that says, I do not care what anybody else thinks. I do not care who else I bother or get in the way. This could be my only opportunity for hope. Jesus is passing by. Jesus is in the room. Jesus is in the midst. And this is an opportunity of a lifetime. And I'm not willing to let it pass me by. Man, I feel God up here today. And so in that moment, in that place, oh, listen, he's moving right now. Don't you wait on me to get done. If you need to be in the altar, I need some people right there with her right now. You cry that much the more. You approach the throne of grace. You approach the place, the well of living water that is springing up in this place this morning. You know what he said? 
The Bible said there was a group of people that said, Oh, hold your peace. Be quiet. But my Bible said, Brother J.R., in the moment of desperation, he was able to hush out every other voice and every other noise and every other place. The feeling of desperation, the feeling of hopelessness was overwhelmed by the presence. Just God hadn't even touched him yet, but the very presence of a living God gave him enough hope welling up inside of him that the Bible said in that moment, Brother Philip, he cried not just a little, not just once, not just a a, a quick little prayer, but my Bible said he cried that much the more. I come to tell somebody in the house of God this morning, don't you give up. Don't you quit crying. Don't you quit pleading. Don't you quit seeking out hope that comes only from Jesus Christ. The Bible said this, he cried that much the more and I was astounded. I've read it and we focused on his blindness. We focused on him being a beggar. We focused on how much he cried. But Brother Will, here's what I saw in the text that I've never even noticed before. The Bible said in that moment that when he cried that much the more, Jericho, Brother Bob, was a place that was rocky. It was rough terrain. It was difficult to traverse the terrain geographically. And can you imagine for a blind man that could not see the terrain, it was difficult to travel the path. But here's what I read. The Bible said when he cried that much the more and that much louder, Jesus stood still in a specific place. He stopped and hovered. Oh my, I'm telling you, he hovered in that spot. And one writer said this, it was believed that from accounts of other particular uh, writers, it was believed that Jesus positioned and strategically stopped in a place where there was a clear path that led from that blind man straight to him. It's rocky over there. It's rough over here. It's hilly out there where you've been, but I'm going to stop in a place where you can get straight to me, where you can hear my voice, where you can call on me, and you'll have no trouble getting to me. You may have prayed out there. You may have battled out there. But I've got good news. You've come to a place this morning in the house of God where there's a clear place. There's a clear path that's laid out where you can come and cast all your care on Him for He cares for you. The Bible said He stopped and He stood still. He stood still. Sister Dottie, you know what He said? What do you have need of? What do you have need of? Whatever it is that you need for me to do for you. And here's where that man made a decision. Here's what he did. Reading your Bible. Verse number 50. The Bible said that he took off his beggar garment. (laughs) Before he was made whole, before he received sight, before there was any meal in the barrel, before he had the answer to what he was seeking from God, Brother Ken, (laughs) he cast off his beggar garment. There was something so clear about the voice of God. There was something so moving about the fact that Jesus was willing to stop right there in a place where he could get to him in that very moment that made him cast away the garment he used for begging and travel towards the voice and the only thing that could give him hope that made him move in the direction of life that made him move in the direction of salvation can I set a clear path for you right here just for a minute this morning 
If you're lost and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart right now that Jesus Christ has stopped and strategically positioned Himself in this sanctuary this morning where, listen, here's the path. Here's the gospel. Can I tell somebody, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe in Him, you can have life. You ain't got to have money. You ain't got to know every Bible verse. You may not see everything clearly. Your life may not be perfect, but I can point you to Jesus who said just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be saved. Listen, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I've got good news for you. If you're already saved, but you're not where you need to be this morning, could I allow a clear path to be put out before you and remind you that you are not hopeless. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Oh, but if you'll come and confess your sin, we've got a God in heaven that said, oh, if you'll confess your sin, I'll be faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you. You know what happens when we call on God? He not only forgives us of our sins, but He cleanses our wounds and He cleans us up. And when He cleans us up, He'll restore our relationships. He'll restore our families. That which is broken, that which has been hopeless. Oh, I hope you can see there's a clear path that you can come and get to Jesus this morning. (laughs) Oh, if you're broken. Oh, if you're weary. Oh, if you're sick. Oh, if you're in need. You say, preacher, I guess it's just not God's will. I wish I had somebody with the audacity this morning that would approach the throne of grace and say, I'm going to cry that much the more. Devil, I refuse to allow my beggar garment. I refuse for the blindness. I refuse for the brokenness. I refuse for my family to continue to be ripped apart. It will not be my new normal. I will cast aside my beggar garment this morning and approach the throne of grace through a clear path. I'll cry that much the more. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I just, I just come to tell somebody this morning, you can trust Him. <laughs> you can trust Him. I just come to tell somebody this morning, you don't have to stay where you are. Whatever it is that's hindering you, whatever it is that has blocked your path, whatever it is that has got in your mind and told you that things are not okay, but you feel like you're the only one that can't get help, I wish you would stand up and make the first step to flood this altar. I wish God's people this morning I would get up out of their place and say, I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I wish God's people I would get up out of their place this morning. I wish people would come out of the balcony and say, oh, you have no idea. I don't need religion. I don't need formality. I don't need a better help speech. I need Jesus this morning. It's the real thing or die. I need the real thing. I need Christ. And though I may stumble, though I may slip, I hear His voice. And I wish you would heed that voice this morning. As people are already approaching this altar, people are already coming. Maybe maybe you can be that voice. <clears throat> maybe you're not in this desperate need this morning for yourself, but you could sure be that voice that could come alongside somebody oh, that's trying to figure out what they're doing, that's trying to figure out all the commotion and the noise. You can come along beside them and say, I just want you to know I may not be able to pray the best prayer. I may not have all the answers. Oh, But Brent, I just want to get down in your ear this morning in this altar and tell you Jesus is passing by. That's Jesus that's coming. Everything is going to be all right. Hey, David, Jesus, he's already here. He's already coming through. And I got good news. He stopped in first free will this morning. He stopped in this place. And he's ready to meet your need. Come unto me. All that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. As we stand on our feet this morning, they begin to sing. 
If you've got a burden, you've got a need, you're not here already. <coughs> oh, why don't you cry just a little more? Your faith will make you whole this morning. Why don't you trust God? Why don't you trust God with your life? Why don't you try Him? I'm talking about not just half-heartedly. I'm talking about giving Him everything. Giving Him everything. Won't you trust Him this morning? As you come. Oh, grab somebody by the hand. Say, I'll go with you. I'll help get you to Jesus. I'll help take you this morning. Why don't you mind God? Father, have your way. God, have your way. right now somebody sitting in your seat right now and you're thinking well song's almost over invitation's almost over Jesus has already done a few things he's already helped a few people I've probably waited too long listen to me if you're sitting in your seat and you feel the tug of God you've still got a need you've still got a burden you've still got a, a fear there's still something weighing heavy on your heart and you've tried to handle it You've tried to figure it all out. You're just not sure if this whole religion thing is for you. Oh, I'm begging you, this service is not over. Jesus is still standing still. Jesus is still available. You say, well, preacher, everybody, some are already come and gone from the altar. There are, there's plenty of room for you right now. Won't you mind God this morning? I beg you, don't leave in the same brokenness. Don't leave with the same heaviness you came into this place with. Even question why, I'll trust him this morning. What good would ever come from this? How could God? My mind, but God's teaching me to trust him. Oh, 
Well, he wants to work his will in your life. He can paint a sunset in the western sky. If he can make the sun to rise. We need prayer this morning. In Sister Dottie asked if we would call for the elders this morning. If he can and pray. rise up from the grave. Jesus. That's passing on the truth. I believe in healing this morning, don't you? I know Jesus. Sister Mary's back. Can I say this? I just me. <clears throat> I'm glad we got a praying church. But for some that may be newer and some that may not understand what all this is about, can I just say this? There's no, there's no special potion. There's no, there's no power in the oil. The power is in the obedience to just doing what Jesus said to do. The power is in saying, God, I, I trust you. And I believe in you. And if you said to call on the elders of the church and pray and anoint them with oil, then I'll do whatever it takes to surrender and believe in your hand. And that's what we're doing this morning. We're just trying our best to be obedient. Brother Ken, will you pass that around? We're just trying our best to mind God and believe that He's able to believe that He's able.
I can take a heart that's broken, make it over again. Sin sick and wash it white as the snow. But I know a man who can. Oh, now some call him Savior, the Redeemer of all. Jesus, for he's my dearest friend. And if you think no one can help you, and your life is out of hand, I know a man who Some call him Savior, the Redeemer of all men, but I call him Jesus, for he's my dearest friend. If you think no one can help you, Life is out of hand. I know a man who can. his name. Wasn't God good this morning? <clears throat> Some are still praying. Will you pray with me right now? Father, God, we're so humbled. God, I'm overwhelmed by the goodness of God. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit in this place. God, I pray that this church, I pray this community, I pray this congregation God would never take for granted the goodness of God. Lord, I pray that needs have been met. I pray that, Lord, every person that came into this place with a burden, with a valley, with a struggle, God, I pray we would leave 
with the hope of glory. God, I pray that we would leave with our eyes being open to a new vision, to new victory. God, I pray that we would leave, God, with a new garment of praise in place of the spirit of heaviness. Lord, if there is somebody here today that didn't surrender their life to you, God, that's not saved, Lord, I pray you'd convict their heart, draw them to the love of Jesus. God, if there's still others that are burdened and broken, God, meet their needs like only you can do. Lord, I bless your name. Luke, sing that chorus. All my life he's been faithful. Sing it with us just a minute, church. Worship him just for a moment. God, he's been so good to us. All my life you have been faithful. Why don't you lift your hands and worship him just for a moment. Hadn't he been good to us? All my life you have been so, so good. Oh, bless his name. <laughs> With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, one more time, church, sing it like you mean it. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will see of the goodness of God I will see of the goodness of God I'm telling you what, isn't God so good? Bless His holy name. Oh, bless His name. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm telling you what, such a sweet presence in the house of God today. And I'm believing people got help. I'm believing people got some hope. Don't stop crying out to Him. Don't stop believing and trusting in Him. What a wonderful service today. Thank you so much for being here, Brother Bob. My pleasure to have you here today. Our pleasure as a church, and uh, you'll definitely be back. Did you enjoy him today? Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Remember the service tonight, 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock tonight. Remember the, the time change? So service is 6 o'clock tonight. Luke, you got any announcements? I remember Vacation Bible School coming up on August the 1st uh, here at the church, and be sure to tell all the kids and bring all the kids you know uh, to Vacation Bible School. Looking forward to a great week with that. If you've got any questions, see Sister Bethany Stalkup, uh, who's here in the balcony, and uh, she'll be glad to help uh, answer any questions that you may have. Uh, service tonight at 6. Remember, choir practice this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Yes, Leslie, I got it for you. So, uh, <laughs> Amen. And if you can be here lastly, for that, yeah, come be in choir practice. Be sure to stop by and see Brother Bob on your way out. He's got CDs and things back in the back, and uh, I know he'd appreciate the support of his ministry, and uh, don't, don't hold Alabama and him being a uh, graduate of the University of Alabama against him. You show him some grace this morning, and uh, Brother Kyle said, yeah, they invented the toothbrush in Alabama, <laughs> and he said, no, that was at Auburn, so, so you, you be sure to stop by and... Uh, <laughs> You be sure to stop by and see him on your way out this morning. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. Let's get our hands up and exercise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.